Now we will look at how to design an address plan for a simple campus. We will be using our campus from the fiber pricing exercise. As you can see on the screen, we have six buildings with a server land and a core and border router. The following table shows you the host allocation for each part of that campus. As you can see on the screen, the border router to core router contains two devices. The server network contains 23 devices. The sign buildings contains 120 devices and so on to the wireless network, which contains 350 devices. The university will be using the following IP address space. It will be using 172.16.0.0/16 for its IPv4 address block, and 2001:db8:8/48 for its IPv6 address block. You will now use this address blocks to design an IPv4 and IPv6 address plan for the campus. Using the previous table, we'll add a column to show the subnet sizes for each function. For the border to core router, you see the number of devices is 2. That means the subnet size needed is a slash 30. For the server network, you have 23 devices. That means you need a slash 27 for its subnet size. Remember that a slash 27 will give you 32 IP addresses and you can only have 30 usable addresses in that prefix. For this server network, you are only allowed to add seven additional devices in case it's needed in the future. So when you're planning, you also have to make room for devices that might be needed for that network in future. Um, for the science building, you have 120 devices. In this case, we're using a slash 25, which will give you 128 possible IP addresses with 126 IP addresses that will be usable. So for the science building, you can see that they will only have an additional six devices that they can add to the network in future. For the arts building, you have 52 devices and you're going to have a prefix size of slash 26. Remember, slash 26 will give you 64 IP addresses. For the engineering building, you have 200 devices and we're using a slash 24 prefix, which will give you 256 IP addresses. For the library, you're going to have 80 devices, in which case we're using a slash 25 will give you a possible number of 128 devices on that network. Um, administration building, you have 40 devices, which will also use a slash 26. Languages building, 30, which will need a prefix of slash 26. In this case, a slash 26 is also going to give you 64 IP addresses. So the question here is if we need 30 devices on the network, why are we allocating a slash 26? Remember that if we allocate a slash 27, we will have 32 IP addresses and two out of them are not usable. So you'll only have 30 IP addresses available. So that means for the languages building, you will not be able to add any single device if you use a slash 27 prefix. So this is the reason why a big prefix is allocated for the languages building. For the staff and the student hostel, you have 60 devices. So you're going to have a slash 25, which will give you possible 128 devices on the network, which is 126 usable IP addresses. And for the wireless network, you have 350 devices, which will give you a slash 23. This is 512 devices available. Now let's assign the IP address blocks accordingly. For the border to core router, you have two devices. We're allocating the first slash 30 prefix, which is 172.16.0.0 slash 30. For the server network, which is has 23 devices, we're allocating slash 27 as shown previously. The IP address prefix assigned is 172.16.0.32 slash 27. For the science building, we have 120 devices and we allocated a slash 25 and we're using the prefix 172.16.5.0 slash 25. 
for the arts building we have 52 devices and we're using a slash 26 prefix which is 172.16.5.128 slash 26 for the engineering building which has 200 devices we're using a slash 24 and the prefix allocated is 172.16.100 slash 24 the library building has 80 devices and it's using the prefix 172.16.4.0 slash 25 the administration building which has 40 devices and was allocated a slash 26 prefix is using 172.16.0.192 slash 26 and the language is building which has 30 devices is using the prefix 172.16.5.192 slash 26 and the staff and student hostel which has 60 devices is using 172.16 dot four dot one twenty eight slash twenty five and the wireless network is using one seventy two dot sixteen dot two dot zero slash twenty three. I guess you're going to be wondering how did we come up with all of these prefix allocations? We're going to give you the IPv4 plan explanation. We're going to use the first slash twenty four prefix for infrastructure and administration network. So we're going to use one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot 0 slash 24 for infrastructure and administrative network. The border router to core router gets 172.16.0.0 slash 30. Remember, that's the slash 30 needed for that network. The server network gets the prefix 172.16.0.32 slash 27 which is the first available slash 27 prefix in that range after the border router to core router assignment. Remember that you can use any slash 27 prefix in that range. The administration building gets 172.16.192 slash 26 prefix, which is also a free slash 26 prefix in that range. How do we assign prefixes? We're going to start by assigning the biggest subnets first. So since wireless has the biggest network, we're going to assign that prefix first. So wireless is going to get 172.16.2.0 slash 23 prefix, which has a range of 172.16.2.0 all the way to 172.16.3.255. Remember that a slash 23 prefix is equivalent to two slash 24 prefixes. So the first available slash 23 prefix is 172.16.2.0 slash 23. You can also use any free slash 23 prefix in the 172.16.0.0 slash 16 pool. We will next assign the slash 24 prefix, which is the next biggest subnet. This goes to the engineering building, which will have 172.16.1.0 slash 24. Remember that prefix was available after the administration and infrastructure network was assigned. So this is the first free brief slash 24 prefix and we're assigning it to the engineering building. We'll then move on to the slash 25s. We have three of them. So we'll assign the first prefix to 172.16.4.0 slash 25, which is the first free available prefix after the wireless network. And you're going to have 172.16.4.128 slash 25, which is going to the staff understood and hostel. The first one went to the library building. And then you have the last slash 25 prefix, which is the 172.16.5.0 slash 25, which goes to the science building. Finally, we assign the remaining slash 26, which is two of them. The arts building gets 172.16.5.128 slash 26. And the language is building gets 172.16.5.192 slash 26. Remember, it's easier to do the big pieces first and then fill in the gaps with the smaller subnets. Use of the aggregation tree concept that we covered previously is very helpful in the creation of an IPv4 address plan. In conclusion, we have addressed our network using 172.16.0.0 
through to 172.16.5.255. This is contained within the 172.16.0.0 slash 21 address block. This is an example of an efficient use of an IPv4 address place. Remember, we talked about aggregation. This is very useful when you're aggregating your network.